to the members of the Philippine media delegation and to our international media friends covering the 35th ASEAN Summit here in Bangkok, Thailand. We are delighted to have the presence of Secretary Ramon Lopez of the Department of Trade and Industry and uh, uh, to talk about or to speak uh, about the participation of the Philippines ahead of the, ter uh, ahead of the opening ceremony of ASEAN Summit. Sir, good afternoon. And uh, uh, I'll turn it over to you for your opening statement, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're happy to be here uh, uh, to participate uh, in, the, uh, in the ASEAN Summit. Our president, Rodrigo Roa Duterte, arrived last, last night, and that uh, the Philippines will uh, fully participate in all the summits, all the sessions of the leaders uh, in, this ASEAN, uh, in this round of ASEAN meetings. Uh, on my part, uh, being the Trade and Industry Secretary, uh, we were here since uh, yesterday and we had uh, long meetings. Uh, all the trade ministers were finalizing the uh, RCEP, as you know very well. Uh, everyone is working hard, including the negotiators, the ministers, so that we can present a, you know, a very positive news to the leaders when they meet on November 4. Uh, and that would be the, I think, one of the uh, summits, uh, related summits towards the end of the session of ASEAN. Uh, so that will be on November 4. Okay. Um, now we will move to the question and answer uh, session or portion. Uh, please, uh, Denny Chen of Ajans France Press. Hi, sir. I'm with AFP. I was wondering um, if you could tell us how U.S. protectionism is affecting Southeast Asian economies. Uh, Malaysian Mahathir just sort of railed about it during his speech at the ABIS. Thank you, sir. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, I was not able to hear the message of uh, the Prime Minister. Um, but obviously, the, the U.S.-China trade war has presented as uncertainties in the world, the uh, trade environment, including the investment environment, and it has uh, somehow led to uh, some slowdown. Even in the world economic projection, it has impacted uh, the global output projection uh, down to around 3%. Uh, certainly, this would have impact on the performance of many, if not most countries, because uh, we all are part of the supply chain, the global supply chain, and a slowdown in one economy can really affect the orders uh, you know, from another economy, from another country. Uh, as far as uh, Philippines is concerned, uh, we are also affected, but uh, unfortunately, well, fortunately, in some indicators, uh, even for our, our exports, even in some countries like U.S. and China, we've been posting uh, still positive growth uh, in the past uh, quarters. And uh, I guess we're, we're just fortunate that uh, these markets are, like for China, are relatively new or non-traditional for us in terms of exports. And they have just really opened up since 2016 and have just continued to uh, uh, purchase uh, more Philippine products given the the, the, I guess the good relationship between our two presidents, uh, President Duterte and President Xi Jinping. Um, we, the Philippines, maintain a, a healthy and uh, good relationship with all countries. Uh, we, we are a developing country. We have to be a friend uh, to all the countries uh, in the same way that even in the U.S. we continue to uh, uh, experts on, on a positive, uh, with a positive growth rate. Uh, and that is considering also that uh, the U.S. accord uh, GSP uh, trade privilege to the Philippines. Uh, so, yes, it will, it can, but total, uh, of course, uh, exports of like our semiconductors, which is part of the global supply chain, uh, was affected. I mean, there, there, there is a slowdown in some sectors but growth in, in, in some sectors. Okay. Uh, Tan Yu Wee, The Straits Times. Good 
Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Lee from the Straits Times. I have two questions. Um, how soon do you think this U.S.-China trade war could be resolved? And the second question I have is about RSM. Uh, uh, do you think that we would see a conclusion by Monday? And there's been some discussion that maybe RCEP could just go ahead with the countries that are willing to sign on the dotted line now. In other words, uh, leave India out of the equation. What are your thoughts? Okay. Uh, I'll go to the RCEP first. So, so we had uh, long meetings, uh, mostly in executive session uh, among trade ministers so that we can tackle the remaining uh, pending issues. Uh, in the many chapters of uh, RCEP, uh, as you know, last uh, few months ago, we were reporting something like 18 chapters concluded uh, out of the 20. And when we talk of chapters, these are mostly chapters or areas of uh, cooperation that will govern cooperation among the different RCEP participating countries, as well as rules. So on the rules. And, and uh, I think what we can say is that we can report a very positive development. There's really uh, substantial progress, uh, shall we say near conclusion or preliminary conclusion so that uh, we can have a, a, a very positive report uh, come Monday. Um, uh, text base wise, I would say it's uh, almost concluded. Uh, uh, all countries are in, uh, but in the text based uh, chapters, uh, of course, uh, one country uh, would prefer to uh, have some kind of confirmation uh, before they can really totally agree you know, to, to the uh, conclusion of all these 20 chapters. Um, and uh, after this, uh, there would be a continuing, just a continuing negotiation on the remaining items as part of the market access, in the market access area, which uh, hopefully can be finished uh, by about February next year. Okay. Priya Pakunsong of the Associated Press. Sir, how can Trade Minister announce conclusion on ASEP negotiation if there are still pending key issues involving India? No, uh, that's why the well, I'm not saying it's India, but definitely one, one country will have to uh, get there, uh, I guess, uh, uh, wants to have some resolution on pending issues that they still have. So there would, I would, we would say that there is conclusion to clearly to the 15 and a, a pending uh, resolution of issues to the one. Uh, remaining country, but the intention is really to include all the 16 so that we can have a, a more comprehensive, high quality uh, FTA in the region. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sputnik. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. I'm from Russian news agency, Tartas. Uh, last month, Singapore signed. Uh, free trade agreement with uh, Euro, Euro Asia Economy uh, Union. Mm -hmm. uh, does Philippines uh, start the same talks with uh, this organization, or maybe ASEAN would like to start the same uh, talks with uh, Euro, Euro Asia? Thank you. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, f well, for Philippines, uh, we have a GSP arrangement with the European, uh, with the e East uh, Euro Asian. Uh, 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 economies uh, and that uh, we would be open to uh, exploring uh, a possible FTA with this group. Uh, however, for now, the dialogue has been at the regional level between ASEAN and the Euro-Asian uh, economies. Uh, so we, we will have to continue just to assess and study, you know, uh, how uh, with this benefit, uh, the, in behalf of the Philippines, how can this benefit uh, as we participate or if we are to participate in, a, uh, in an FTA with this group? Okay. Next question, Mr. Jim Gomez of AP. Good afternoon, Secretary. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, still on the RCEP, uh, th this market issue has been pending for some time. 
And uh, if, if there will be no resolution with that one country that you, you're talking about next year, uh, is there a probability that this one country will be left out uh, of, of, uh, of the negotiation so it can move forward and be signed uh, probably first semester next year? Um, anything is possible, but uh, the mindset right now is uh, for everyone to be in. Uh, all efforts are being extended, being worked on so that everybody can be in. We believe that uh, even that one country can uh, is working, uh, you know, uh, uh, doubly hard so that they can uh, ad assess and uh, address all the uh, issues uh, pending, as far as the rules and even as as far as market access uh, is concerned. So the mindset is for us to all of us to be uh, uh, included in the uh, RCEP. Secretary, is, still, is, is it still a, a substantial uh, like di differences over market issue approaches, or is it just a matter of this one country reporting to their publics and, and their sectors and then, then go on with? Yeah, I would say the second, uh, really more of uh, consultation and getting uh, confirmation on certain matters. Uh, it's still a work, on pro work in progress with, when it comes to like items, products, or services uh, in the market access area. Um, uh, but uh, uh, generally speaking, if we talk of uh, the rules, more or less it's laid out and uh, it's the, the, any pending resolution or issue that they have would just have to be resolved from their end. Okay. Philip of uh, Bloomberg. Hi, how are you doing? Hello. Um, could you just please explain a little more about what's going to happen before Monday with regards to RCEP talks? As of right now, uh, you're saying this one country, which, I, which we all know to be India, is not participating. But I, I wonder, will there be more meetings today, tomorrow? No, it's not that that country will not participate. Uh, that, I mean, they're just getting some you know, consultations and confirmation from back home. Uh, on certain rules or issues uh, that are still pending. Uh, there will be no more meetings um, um, <coughs> among trade ministers, so it's quite internal uh, to them. And, uh, and uh, by that time, we shall uh, uh, finalize, I guess, the, uh, the text of that report to the leaders. Understood. So it will be the trade ministers uh, submitting that report to the leaders, yeah. Okay, and just a second question. Uh, how big a deal will the code of conduct be uh, throughout the rest of the time of this uh, summit? Uh, I'm will sorry, how big? Uh, the, the code of conduct uh, will, it be con will it be discussed with China uh, during this time, in the next couple of days. How much headway do you expect to make on that issue? Um, I, I'm not uh, privy to the discussion on the code of conduct, so I'm sorry, that's not my area. Okay. Yeah. Um, Yuan Minchen of Xinhua News Agency. <coughs> Thank you, Secretary. Uh, I'm Yuan Muchen from Xinhua News Agency. I have a question about the China-ASEAN trade relations. Uh, now we know China, uh, ASEAN is the second largest uh, trade partner of China, and China has been uh, ASEAN's largest trade partner for the mm -hmm. past decades. And uh, we have news that last month upgraded China-ASEAN free trade agreements, CAFTA, has been fully implemented. So as a member of ASEAN, can you give us some comment on the future of China-ASEAN uh, trade relations? Thank you. Uh, well, we, we, we see and we notice China has been very, uh, I guess, uh, in a cooperative, cooperative stance uh, with respect to its trading partners and in all these discussions, uh, even in the RCEP. Uh, we believe that they have adopted a, I guess, a, a welcoming posture, uh, talking about uh, liberalization as well as uh, making sure that the rules are in place um, and that uh, basically hope, well, they're basically looking into the, uh, the, uh, the fine tuning of the rules and making sure that they will be in place uh, in, in this agreement. So, uh, 
I think the, the posture is that they want to grow, of course, the business, I mean, both ways, uh, ASEAN and then and China. And of course, if you look at the bigger perspective, the RCEP will include other economies. Uh, so just like other countries, the reason why we're participating, we believe that this will lead to, to much stronger flows of trade and investment. No? So I think that's what China is looking at as well. Uh, they, they recognize the fast growth uh, of, of, of uh, ASEAN countries as well as other participating uh, uh, RCEP countries. Uh, of course, we all know that not all would be the, as the same size as China and India, but nevertheless, they are important or major economies in the, in the world, no? and especially in this part of the, the world. So, so the, the RCEP really presents uh, good opportunities for everyone. Uh, with uh, better rules that will govern the flow of trade, investment, services, uh, ec economic and technical cooperation, MSMEs, and, and many other uh, forms of cooperation that are all part of RCEP. Okay. Uh, Cliff uh, Vincent, Nikkei. Oh. Sorry, good afternoon. Just to clarify, um, what will be the scenario in case that uh, one country fails to get uh, permission back home before uh, the leaders meet on Monday? And would you still, uh, sorry, what, how, how, what, what will be the scenario? Uh, Just in I guess it might be, it will continue to be a pending issue with that, uh, with that country. Mm -hmm. So that is what might happen. Uh, but definitely, uh, the uh, what we call the legal scrubbing, all this, uh, the the post conclusion work can start. Mm. Uh, and as mentioned, there are still pending matters on some products and services inclusion. Uh, that will have to be, uh, I guess, still worked on mm -hmm. until uh, February next year. So. <laughs> The pro probability-wise, of course, as I said, anything is possible, but I think there's greater probability that everyone will be in. Mm -hmm. G given, the, given the progress you made, sir, yesterday, and the, the progress that could uh, happen in the, in the coming days before the summit, mm -hmm. would you still regard what was uh, achieved during this meeting as like substantial? Oh, yes, completion? definitely. Okay. Uh, very... Uh, substantial improvement. You remember when we start the year, uh, as of last end of last year, we were just seven. We just had about seven chapters concluded. And everybody was just trying to settle all the issues per chapter until we come up to be around 18 of the 20 before the meeting yesterday and, and finally closed on the last two chapters. Okay, Dean. Uh, um, me again, sir. <laughs> um, if if India is not included in RCEP, is there any worry that uh, there would be no giant counterbalance to China, another superpower? No, there's no worry on that one, uh, because as you, if you will think about it, ASEAN already has uh, an FTA with China. Actually, ASEAN has an FTA with each of these country. So it's really just integrating all the other uh, FTA partners of ASEAN all together. And of course, uh, leveling up the, uh, the uh, cooperation, leveling up the, uh, the levels of liberalization, for example, the products included, services included. Uh, it has to be better than the current ASEAN uh, plus one FTAs. So as it is, we're already operating and, and working with, with China as in the same way that we are working with New Zealand, with Australia, with Korea, et cetera. Okay. I meant more in terms of political influence in the uh, region. No, 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 no. It's purely, I guess this is really purely about trade, uh, commerce, and, and investments. No? Investment flows uh, from one country to the other and the necessary, of course, promotion, encouragement, at the same time, protection of all these uh, investments. Okay, Cliff. Did you assess any 
because Ch China is having uh, trade tensions with the uh, with the U.S. Uh, I'm just curious if uh, did you sense a greater passion from China this year during this round of negotiations to finally conclude, push it harder to for the for RCEP to be uh, concluded um, this year. Uh, that's an interesting adjective. Greater passion. They're, they're pretty much uh, like the same, I guess. <laughs> we didn't notice any uh, sudden increase in passion. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, the, uh, I think since about, even about two years, I think three years ago, they re have really come out in, in the world that from their president, I remember in Davos and in other fora that they re they're really, I mean, coming out wanting to be a major participant in world trade and uh, Going after uh, fair trade and uh, and uh, rules based uh, multilateral uh, economic arrangements. So, yes, it's just being consistent with all their pronouncements. Okay. No more question. Hi, right. Sir Jim. <clears throat> Thank you. Secretary, we, we know that you deal primarily with trade issues, but uh, if you care to comment, uh, what will be the, what's, what's, how are the ministers talking about and what will be the impact of President Trump, you know, uh, not being able to attend the ASEAN summits this year, uh, as well as uh, Canadian Prime Minister Trudeau? Uh, what effect will this have on, on perceptions of the U.S.? activeness and Im engagements in, in this region mm. and, and the relevance of ASEAN? Uh, you know, frankly, we, haven't, we, we did not discuss that. I mean, I guess there, it was not given uh, that, uh, I mean, that issue, uh, or if you can call that as an issue, was not given much importance. Nobody has raised it, I guess, in any even informal gathering. So I, I don't think it's an issue. Okay, Bernadette Nicolas of Business Mirror. Good afternoon, Secretary. Good afternoon. Um, may we know if there's already a specific schedule for tariff reduction po under RCEP, sir, during the negotiations, sir? Yes, uh, in, all, in the negotiation, as you include the product, uh, there has uh, to be that prescribed uh, reduction and how many years and it will be down to zero on a certain year and there has to be that schedule of reduction. Okay. Uh, can, could you be more specific like um, do we see the tariff reduction in like five years, ten years? It ranges, I know. Uh, different, different products, different years. Uh -oh. So there's no final uh, no, it's final. It's on, uh, treated per product, kasi. So, so, so it will be in different years, uh, or with different uh, uh, degree and uh, speed of, of liberalization. Thank you, sir. Okay. Philip of Bloomberg. Sorry again. Um, perhaps you saw Modi in the Bangkok Post today. Uh, made a bit of comment on RCEP needing to be more ambitious in terms of services. And so, you know, I kind of wonder your take on that. What are the disparities between, the, uh, between India and the rest of the uh, RCEP groups yeah. on that particular issue? Yeah, it's a, it's a normal, uh, I guess, uh, a topic where India would tend to push for, you know, more liberalization on services, while others will push for more liberalization on the products, uh, given the varying stages of development and resources, uh, resource availability in each of the countries. So it's a normal, I guess, discussion or topic. So, and, and, and this form, this, all these form part of the, uh, you know, the flavor of negotiations that are taking place uh, in the last seven years. So I, yeah, we, kind, we kind of expected that, uh, those remarks. And, and frankly, those remarks have been those, those, that, that, that uh, strategy has uh, been inputted and been you know, taken into consideration in all these negotiations all these years. Okay. Uh, Gisette of Inquirer. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, sir, good afternoon. Sir, for the understanding of the general public and for our kababayans back home, what exactly would be the impact of the RCEP for our um, local economy? And will, they, will there be particular safeguards to ensure that our local manufacturers wouldn't bear like a negative brunt um, once this trade pack is signed? Yeah, so um, yes, uh, we'd really like to discuss more of that. As in all participating uh, countries, Obviously, all of us would like to see this as beneficial, otherwise we won't get into this. No? So everyone would uh, be uh, uh, offering products that they believe they can export and sell to other markets, and therefore the liberalization, uh, getting uh, uh, more market access in the different participating countries would be important. So they, we all want to make sure that many of these products are included in the negotiations. Uh, and, and if you really think about that, that those, these are the, the things that can really benefit our exporters. So as to the benefit, yes, it can open up many uh, or greater market access for the products that we have listed. And that uh, even for services, it's the same thing. More, more of our services, uh, name it, engineering, uh, uh, medical services, health-related services, uh, construction, transportation, uh, all these things can, can mean uh, and can lead to greater market access in the different countries. In the same way that other countries would like to have their products also enter, so enter our country. So it's really working on a much more uh, free environment, trade environment with a degree of fairness and that this is where the safeguards and, and the necessary protection, there are still products excluded, especially if you talk of sensitive products and this would normally be uh, the agriculture sector as we, many countries would normally be protecting their, their farmers, the farming sector. So, but, but for products that are not sensitive, in other words, they're not excluded from the list, uh, all this would uh, would be open and uh, with, of course with different schedules of, of uh, tariff reduction so that more and more uh, access are gained every year. So it will, can lead to greater exports across great, greater manufacturing activities uh, in the respective countries, employment, uh, jobs and income, higher income. So, and of course uh, part of this arrangement encouraging investments ensuring also that the investments are protected. Uh, this, this, these items form part of the rules. Uh, at the same time, you're talking of market access, so all of this can encourage investments and, and uh, greater economic activities in, in all the countries. So uh, I can just, there, there are these many products that eventually we will issue out as we finalize the market access negotiations. Uh, and then and, and, uh, each country would I'm sure be sharing uh, products that where they gain more market access. Secretary, just uh, another yeah. topic, if you don't mind. Um, I was just wondering if in the uh, meetings that we've had so far, um, I'm not sure if you're privy to some discussions, but is the African swine fever a topic among some of the ministers? Um, in the in trade, the in this recent meeting? No, mm -hmm. it wasn't discussed, uh, uh, not discussed at all. Uh, I guess everyone is just aware that there is that problem, but it is really a technical problem wherein ASF affected countries obviously cannot uh, sell to the other countries or other countries would be blocking you know, the importation of these uh, ASF uh, affected uh, or products from ASF affected countries. So, but it wasn't discussed at all in the gatherings, formal or informal. Joanna of Asahi Shimbun. Good afternoon, sir. Good how afternoon. long can the region wait before, well, how long can the region wait for India to accomplish its local consultations? I didn't say region? India. Uh, <laughs> how, long can we wait, how, how long can the region wait for this one particular country to finish <laughs> consultations with its uh, local markets and sectors? Will there be any negative impact if we delay the implementation of RCEP for too long? And, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, we hope to finish everything, including market access negotiation by February. What we're saying is that the rules are uh, concluded for the 15th. And uh, as to the uh, 
verification or a confirmation of uh, acceptance from that one country. Uh, we expect that to be happening soon, hopefully before the Monday meeting. Okay. Otherwise, uh, the text of the report can be changed. Nicholas. But when I say change can be changed, I'm not saying, one. yeah, so I, I know you'll ask. So it, it will be changed, but not to the point that, you know, we will exclude that one. So it will, we will just have to, uh, uh, I guess, uh, consider whatever change that would be. You know? uh, but again, I, I'm coming from the mindset, we are all coming from the mindset that everyone will be part of uh, this agreement. Thank you, Joanna. Bernadette Nicolas, Business Mirror. Sir, since the RCEP talks are nearing its conclusion, did any of the parties raise uh, concern about the risk and or opportunities of concluding the deal amid the U.S.-China trade war uh, since China is part of the RCEP trade deal, sir? Uh, no risk. And if you uh, look at from that perspective, there is no risk at all. What uh, is happening is that in this part of the world, there is this uh, mega trade deal uh, that's being finalized. Uh, and that, of course, uh, no matter what happens to the China-US uh, trade war, this definitely would be a, a, a bright spot you know, in the world, in this world environment. Amidst uncertainties, the more we can, and we should be projecting a much stronger regional uh, trade and investment uh, arrangements you know, in this it's part of the world. So, but of course, we all hope that the U.S.-China trade war can subside and can be settled, and and that, uh, of course, that would mean uh, that is for the good of everyone. You know? But um, regardless of what happens there, this is definitely a, a bright spot. You know. Okay. No more question. Akiko. You still cannot guess that one country. Huh? <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. That concludes our press conference. But before that, I would like to acknowledge the presence of Presidential Communications Secretary Martin Andanar. Thank you, Secretary Lopez. <laughs> Sir. Thank you. And thank you to all the media participants.